Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. We are back again with a review for Black Geyser. So I feel the need to kick this review off with a clear message. If you are a fan of this genre and want to see more isometric, party-based fantasy RPGs, then I believe you should buy this game. As I have stated in other videos, I don't think this game is as good as classics within the genre. However, I absolutely believe Grape Ocean Technologies shows flashes in this game that clearly communicates they are capable of making something great, if they have the resources to do so. This game has a lot of rough edges, and I plan to go over many of them, but there is a strong foundation that I believe the community should be willing to support. With all that being said, let's dive in. I want to go through things I enjoyed first, starting with the Black Geyser character creation process. You can select a human, dwarf, elf, Feldegug, which are basically snow elves, or Arillo, which is a unique race created for the game. Seeing a large brother with elephant tusk in his face holding a scimitar was right up my alley, so I selected Rillo and was not disappointed. I am not certain if there's reactivity in the game for all the races you can play, but there was definitely multiple points where my race was pointed out and usually in a very negative fashion. Each race comes with specific bonuses and limitations on what class you can select. There are 13 different classes to choose from, including Templar, Swindler, and Convoker, which is a type of summoner. There is a multi-class system, but I wouldn't recommend using it at this time. The game does not provide you enough information about what actually happens when you put two or even three classes together. You think all the bonuses are stacking, when in reality, that's not the case. Grape Ocean has already put out a message on their boards that a patch will be released in the next two weeks that helps clarify this system for players. Once you have a class, then you can go through attributes, skills, and spells. There are a couple of unique twists, but for the most part, these selections will be familiar if you have played this type of game before. My playthrough was with a Convoker, and I had an absolute blast with the spells that were available. The battlefield was constantly being filled up with different creatures assaulting my enemies. The rest of my team was composed of a Fighter, Cleric, Thief, and a Highlander. They all had very clear roles and I enjoy building up the team over time. I do think more work needs to be done with the spells that are available. The cleric in my party always seemed like she was missing something. She was okay at healing and buffing, but didn't really feel like a powerhouse in either area. I had similar thoughts experimenting with the necromancer and druid. The game is not very difficult, so I don't think this detracts from the experience, but it's definitely an area of opportunity for the sequel. I really enjoy the main story of Black Geyser. It does start off a little slower than it should and throws a bunch of jargon at you that you wouldn't understand yet. But after the first couple of hours, things really get rolling. What I enjoyed about the story is you are never sure what you are going to be doing. It could just be a diplomacy mission, or maybe you have to hunt through a necromancer lair, or perhaps you need to do some time traveling. Anything could come up, and the enemies you face throughout the story are equally diverse. The writing didn't blow me away, but there were no moments where I cringed or felt like the developers phoned it in during a pivotal conversation. Also, there were many times when I had more than three legitimate dialogue options to respond with, and I really enjoyed the flexibility on how to roleplay my character. Let's move into the aspects of the game that I see as a mixed bag, starting with the greed system, which added a fascinating twist on the game. There are two bars used to track greed, the world greed bar and the party greed bar. The world greed bar will automatically increase at certain points in the main story, but you can accelerate or decelerate the increase based on your personal actions. A high greed ranking will cause chaos to spread, increasing random encounters and store prices, while also making NPCs inherently distrustful. A lower greed ranking prevents those things from happening. Honestly, I think the implementation of the greed system in the game leaves a lot to be desired, but its impact on the writing is superb. I decided in the beginning to be a completely good person who strictly avoided any actions that would be considered greedy 
or harmful. The result was by far the most altruistic playthrough I have ever experienced. This game bombards you with opportunities to not only refuse gold, but also refuse items that are quest rewards. Every time I had the option to refuse a reward, I took it. And consequently, I had a role-playing experience that truly made me feel like I cared about people. Don't give me that gold. Your family needs it more. Don't give me that dagger. You'll need it in the trying times ahead. Hang on to that bow and take care of yourself. Over and over and over again, I put the needs of people I met above my own personal needs and it was glorious. I say the greed system needs better implementation because my joy comes from the standpoint of playing a lot of games and knowing that dealing with quest rewards in this fashion is rare. The greed system itself didn't react at all to how altruistic I was. I really dislike it when RPGs have all the cool, awesome things happen when you are evil, but playing as a good person is kind of ho-hum. My altruism is single-handedly holding back the curse of greed from spreading across Yerengal. Why isn't anybody coming to stop me? If me being greedy causes greed to spread, then why can't being altruistic cause altruism to spread instead? I love how the writing is impacted by the overall system, but it needs to be fleshed out better to equally reward greedy and non-greedy playthroughs. The crafting system is called brewing and drying, which means you can create potions and powders. Potions are used by your party for healing and to provide specific buffs. Most powders are used to place the buffs or do direct damage on your enemies. The thing I like about this system is you can set your party members to automatically use potions and powders. Seeing your tank pull aggro and then throw a powder that sets your enemies on fire is really satisfying. Even if you don't want to craft them, potions and powders can be looted and bought in stores. The issue that I have with the system is it's way more complicated than it actually needs to be. You can get recipes that will be permanently copied into a crafting menu, but the list only shows the ingredients and name of what you could craft. It doesn't show what the potion or powder actually does. So either you can tell what it does by the name or hopefully you remember it. Sometimes the crafting takes several in-game hours, so you cannot just test it and reload if it's wrong. Also, the menu only shows in the brewing interface, not the drying interface. This forces you to flip back and forth to ensure you are using the correct powder ingredients. It's even worse with top tier powders that oftentimes need you to create two powders and combine them. I like being able to craft items that can be used offensively against enemies, but this is just too cumbersome. Throughout my playthrough, there was a strong sense of nostalgia. And I think whether or not that appeals to you depends on how much you enjoy the games Black Geyser leans upon. This is most readily apparent when you see the graphics, which have a very dated and almost washed out look. In another game, this would be a huge negative, but Black Geyser's graphics strongly remind players of Pillars of Eternity and to a lesser degree, Baldur's Gate. I have strong positive memories of playing those games, so the graphics did not bother me. That being said, the game has an almost constant draft palette. Colors never really pop off the screen the way they do in other current PC games. Finally, for the mixed bag content, let's talk about companions. On the one hand, all of the companions are interesting. Usually upon being recruited, they give you a quest that reveals more of their story and personality. All of them have a kernel that you could see developing into an awesome, memorable character. The problem is there is very little content regarding companions. There is no party banter whatsoever. None of the party members develop any sort of relationship with each other. Occasionally, party members comment during a main quest dialogue. It's very rare that they comment during a side quest. Basically, their main purpose is to fulfill whatever role or class you need on the team. It's really strange to me that a game which counts so heavily on series like Pillars of Eternity and Baldur's Gate would decide party members is the corner they could cut. 
I would strongly argue that most of the people who enjoy those types of games and would consider playing Black Geyser value content regarding party members very highly. Not to mention that having party members stay mute during conversations dealing with subjects those party members are clearly passionate about is very immersion breaking in this game. Quick note before we get into the things I didn't like about this game. If you enjoyed this review, I would really appreciate you taking the time to hit the like button. I use that information to help me determine what kind of content the channel wants to see and the quality of the content that I'm putting out. So I really appreciate your support. All right, let's finally get into the things I just do not enjoy about the game. I've already harped on this in another video, so I won't linger about it here, but low times are definitely too long. In addition to that, there are too many random encounters, which also require a loading screen and make the issue more impactful. The game doesn't provide players with nearly enough information. I found a party member whose race I could not choose during character creation. There was no easy way for me to figure out what the bonuses or penalties are for that race. The log is very inconsistent about what it chooses to track. Multiple times, my party members used a powder whose effects I wasn't sure about, and the log wouldn't tell me what had occurred. There is no scan or inspect option for enemies, so determining resistances and weaknesses is a process of elimination. There is a bestiary, but it doesn't track any information about how to actually defeat the enemies you encounter. It pretty much always feels like you are blind. When a debuff attempt fails on an enemy, the log doesn't provide any information about why this occurred. Is the enemy flat out immune or should I give it another go? There's also not enough ammo or unique versions of most ranged weapons. There are plenty of top tier versions of melee weapons. Bows have plenty of ammo and feel powerful. Slings, fusta balls, and throwing weapons all need more ammunition and need more top quality unique versions that really make you feel powerful. Again, this game is not difficult, so you can use any weapon that you want, but those weapons definitely do not feel equal to their counterparts. This final note may be a little controversial, but personally, I feel like this game really needed a turn-based option. Since the log doesn't contain the information I want, the option to slow things down and really try to understand what's happening in some of the fights was something I desperately wanted. Or maybe I've just been spoiled by Pathfinder, Solasta, and the Pillars games. Regardless, it's strange to me that the game is strictly real-time with pause, and I think it would be better served by allowing players to switch between the two modes. That is my review for Black Geyser. Again, I enjoyed my time with the game and do believe it's worth playing despite the obvious opportunities for improvement. We don't get enough games like this and hopefully with more time and resources, Grape Ocean Technologies can provide an even better role-playing experience. Hope all of you enjoyed this review. If you did, please leave me a like down below, share this content and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.